Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Grant and Corrine and we're going to be talking all about single family dwellings, purpose-built single family dwellings with legal secondary suites in Chatham, Ontario. Grant and Corrine are working on a development project there. They've got the potential for 13 of these single family dwellings with secondary suites. Before we get into it with Grant and Corrine, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Grant, Corrine, thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your crazy busy day uh, to talk about these projects. Before we jump into them, why don't you give us a bit of a background on who you guys are and what you do as real estate investors? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Darren, uh, for the opportunity to be interviewed today on your channel. Appreciate it. Um, you know, in terms of our journey, we started about a year ago. Uh, we actually met you, uh, one of the first people at the uh, Keyspire three-day training. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were just kind of looking to use some of our HELOC funds at that point to, to buy properties and invest ourselves as rental units. And then uh, we sort of got direction to start looking possibly at six or more units in terms of commercial multifamily. Yeah, that was actually our goal was six units. And at that time, we we're thinking, oh, wow, can we even do it? And it was like a year ago. And now we've been expanded to 36. So in a year, we've actually, you know, bought quite a bit. And, and prior to that, in terms of our background, uh, I've been doing renovations since I was a teenager. My brother bought five homes and renovated them in five years for secondary suites. Uh, and then through you know, life with different houses uh, that we've owned doing renovations. And we completed our renovations on our main uh, primary residence and living in that wasn't so fun, but we got through it to get the HELOC ones. <laughs> yeah, I had always had the dream of doing renovations and flipping, doing that, but we're we're doing, you know, more of the birth strategy and, and the, the uh, you know, the hold. So um, that's kind of expanded. So really using our skills to, to move forward and what we're doing now. Let's dive in on this um, this development project you guys are working on. Um, and and if I'm not, uh, if I'm if I'm correct, uh, you're in Chatham, Ontario. Is that right? That's correct. Not physically yeah. in Chatham. You're in you're in Mississauga, but the project is in Chatham, right? Yeah. Well, we're physically there too. I mean, we're out there probably five days a week. So we're mm -hmm. overseeing the, the, the build and all the other properties we're doing in that area. So we are there quite a bit. So let's back up a little bit. How did you find the opportunity in Chad? Why, first of all, why did you choose Chatham? Second of all, why, uh, how did you find this opportunity? We initially started in Southwestern Ontario thinking that if we we're going to get involved in property management, we'd want to acquire properties. And we started running the, uh, the financial numbers against the peak property. And we looked at hundreds of properties. And we quickly realized that urban centers like Toronto, and initially we thought Hamilton, uh, but then the numbers were very tight in terms of cash flow, and you had to have a lot of equity up front for it, especially at the time we were looking at the commercial multifamily. So that was harder because a lot of them, the price point there didn't work. And so we looked over Niagara Falls, St. Catherine, Wellen, Brantford, London, even St. Thomas, uh, Windsor. We looked out east, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. We looked out west, uh, Manitoba, et cetera. And we really loved Chatham because of price point. They really hadn't had that boom in terms of the real estate growth, maybe 150 to $250,000 on average per property. Um, but we saw a lot of people moving from London and Windsor outside. And the pandemic in March and April has just accelerated that transition. People from Toronto, Kitchener, as well as London and Windsor are buying or moving to Chatham and renting. So it really reduced the risk and the numbers look phenomenal in terms of of property. So we ended up buying two single family homes, about 7,000 square feet and 4,600 square feet that we're in the process right now of doing renovations and converting, just in the permitting process. Um, and so that's put us in touch with a lot of contractors and resources and property managers in the area. We built relationships with the municipality in terms of permitting and zoning. And then we thought, well, we can't just do the renovations forever as a strategy. We need to somehow scale. And we're in our uh, late 40s, <laughs> or early 50s. And um, we thought, well, wouldn't it be great to get a new build environment? So we started approaching builders, but the problem is, is there wasn't uh, a purpose built single family home that had a secondary suite. We had to buy them and then spend another eighty dollars to $100,000 to finish the lower unit. And we came across a raised ranch design, which is airy and spacious, only four feet in the grade. It made perfect sense for that type of development. And we were able to partner with a builder in Chatham 
that was flexible to work with our proposed designs and build a product. And, that and not, really yeah, and not only just partnering, we actually built like solid relationships with these builders and, and really develop that relationship and that trust to be able to, you know, have those conversations of, of doing a purpose built design in a single family home and, and tweaking it and him, you know, taking our ideas and, and, uh, you know, growing them to, to what they are today. So it was really, really specifically designed for this and, and they were open to all our ideas. So that was really a bonus for us. Right, you mentioned something about the actual build, um, and you, what did you call it? You called it a raised ranch, I think. Is that what you said? It's a raised ranch. We call it. Um, I've done, some of my properties in Alberta, I think, are are the same. Uh, we call it a, a you know um, a by level is what we call it in Alberta. So, like you say, I think it's only four or five feet below grade. So you've got these big windows in the basement, right? Like three, four feet. And when you're there, it doesn't actually feel like you're in a basement because when you're standing in the basement, you're looking out and you're looking basically even down or at eye level to grade. And so it really changes the, the feel. And, and on a new build, you know, you've got these big windows, you got walkouts, you got all these kinds of things. So I, I they're my best properties that I have um, in Alberta because they're the easiest ones to rent because people walk in and they say, I, and I have one in Toronto, we did it as well. We have three feet above grade. Um, they don't feel like basements, right? And so it, it's it's uh, it's a great model. And I like that you guys have, uh, have sort of figured that out as well. I was gonna say the community has been very open in terms of working with them to build these relationships. For example, the director at recruiting at the healthcare center, you know, they have a problem trying to find premium rentals for their doctors and professionals that want a quartz countertop. They want, they don't want carpet in the unit. So we've actually worked with them earlier to sort of tweak and make sure the design supports it. We've recently modified the design to have a secondary HVAC system so that uh, two units are in separate, separate air flow systems. So from the pandemic and cleanliness, the food smells, you don't get to share all of that type of yeah, the beauty of doing purpose builds, right? You can um, you can optimize your design in order to be able to separate the units and uh, sound transfer and all that stuff is is really great in a new build. Um, so you you found um, obviously a, a subdivision that was uh, up and coming, um, and you're basically working on thir- is it thirteen of these single family homes with secondary suites in them? And I, and from what I understand, you guys said you've got six under development, and you've got another seven that you're looking for joint venture partners partners and the, and the ability to, to move forward on those as well. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we initially went in buying six for ourselves. And so they've already started construction. And um, they're at the point where the foundation and the back of the curds are just, and the concrete basement being poured looks great. Um, and so we're super excited to see that progress. Um, and then we're all, we also decided to secure additional seven lots in that area. It just made sense. Uh, from what was available with the builder. And so we've been working and getting joint venture partners to come in on the investment with us, where we'll do the property and tenant management for them. Of course, manage the, the build and the design selections and that type of thing so that it's going to be marketability, uh, marketable for the tenant and can move forward with that. But we're working on another area too. So there's another 40 of these that, that we're, we're working on as well that are coming up in a, in a new area that the builder is building in. So those are going to be coming available as well. So are there any restrictions? Um, like I know in some subdivisions, they don't want the density of like six single family dwellings with secondary suites in them. Um, is there a problem with density in this area or there, there, the zoning meets those requirements? The zoning makes the requirements. In fact, at the provincial level, uh, initially with the uh, provincial plan, policy plan, uh, they support one accessory dwelling unit. So you can always have a single family home and then a secondary suite to it, whether it's in a separate detached garage, an example, or in a basement unit. They've actually recently, uh, this year, just changed that at the provincial level to support two. So it's being rolled out to different municipalities. And this has been the great thing, working with the municipality director and the planning department is to know that that's coming out. Uh, initially it was planned for December, but now it looks like into the ne- early next year. And so you could buy, a, 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 assuming the zoning supports it. So this is something you have to check with the municipality and we've done our due diligence there that we can legally do that as part of the, the build process and that density. So we can do one, if not two. What's your, what's your cost per square foot for, for these builds? 
Well, first uh, of all, it's what's, what's cost of acquisition for the land? Because I'm sure there's a cost there. And then tell me about the cost per square foot for build. So these particular 13 that we have run a larger premium lot. So we had to pay a bit more for the lot. I think it was about $62,000 for the lot. And you get then, a parking space for that in Toronto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then the, that included with the purchase of the, the, the um, single family home uh, custom built with a secondary suite was about $460,000. So the lot about sixty thousand, so four hundred thousand dollars for the build. You're looking at it's about just under twenty five hundred square feet, so about one hundred and fifty uh, per square foot for construction. Yeah, which is very reasonable. Yeah. Are you finding at all with the with the cost of materials um, rising? Are, are your costs changing at all, or were, were you sort of under contract? Um, prior to the That's, cost of a two by four doubling, <laughs> we, we secured the pricing like months ago. So it, it stayed the same for those ones. Yeah. So these 13 we're offering are, are at that fixed price. Uh, we've just been talking to the builder in terms of the additional lots. And what's interesting is the municipality is charging more for development charges, the, the hydro hookups. So that's, we're estimating about a $20,000 increase in the acquisition just on the, the construction and uh, lot changes, yeah. development changes. Yeah. So the prices right. are going up for the other ones, but that's the thing, right? There's all these increases. But if you look at the market in the, this year alone, real estate prices in Chatham have gone up over 26%, which is phenomenal. Wow. And the last two years was just over 15 as well prior to that. What is the uh, square footage uh, on the main unit? And then what is the square footage in the secondary dwelling? That's 1,500 on the, the, the upper level and the lower level is about 1,000. So yeah. what are you doing? Are you doing three bedrooms up to three bed, three, three bed, two bath? Yeah. So there's three three bedrooms on the on the main level and two on the lower level. With two baths upstairs and one bath that shared downstairs. Yeah, the other thing nice. that's kind of unique in our design is the builder proposed a walkout in the basement. So on top of that, we have a 12 by 16 walkout and egress on the lower level as a patio. And then of course up above is a, a deck of the same size. And cathedral ceilings. The actual house has cathedral ceilings, which is really nice. What is the projected rents uh, that you're going to be collecting on the upper and, and lower units? So we've tried to be conservative looking at Windsor and London and the existing situation in Chatham. So the vacancy is zero and there's a, a high wait list and demand. So $1,500 for the two bedroom uh, and then $1,750 for the three bedroom. You've obviously run your cash flow analysis and things like that. What are these going to turn out on a monthly basis with positive cash flow? It's about eight hundred and thirty-five dollars cash flow for the, the project overall, and the total return on the investment is just over fifty percent. What does the financing look like for a project like this? Um, you guys, I think Grant, you mentioned that you have to. You guys purchased six of these. Um, was it builder financed? Is it construction loans? Like, how are you working the financing? No, we're, we're doing traditional mortgage financing. So we put 10% deposit or our investors put down 10% deposit to secure the property. And then the closing costs and the balance of the down payment are due on closing. Uh, those six properties that we have, by the way, we've kind of positioned it where we can make those available to our joint venture investors earlier so they can get in. So we've got, again, two in March, April, May. That way they're not waiting for a return in the carrying cost of that deposit. And for us, it's kind of negligible in terms of the investment to, to provide that to them as a perk. So are your investors coming in and holding the mortgages for these properties? That's the idea. So it's the typical like joint venture agreement. They're coming in, putting up the down payment capital and I imagine uh, closing costs, things like that. They're qualifying for financing and then you're taking everything else from there in terms of managing the, the build and the project and the, and the management and all that kind of stuff. And, and then profits are split you know, accordingly at the end kind of thing. Is that the structure? Exactly. Uh, but we've also come up with another option. So we've been working with mortgage brokers and some of the, the commercial banks in Canada. So we've built relationships with three of them. And we've come across the ability to get commercial financing on residential properties where there's less than five units. Now, of course, the interest rate instead of a 2%, 3% range is going to be in the 3 to 4%. And the, the down payment requirements are going to be 25 to 30%. And of course, it depends on the investor's situation. But the product still, from a cash flow standpoint, is still a great 
uh, investment. So where people can't qualify for the mortgage, but the property does and will help in that process, they can still make that investment. Have you guys considered doing a um, like grouping five or six of the properties together under one commercial loan and bringing in a group of investors? We have. And so initially we were thinking that with the six that we had purchased to do that or possibly break them up in three. And likewise, if that's an option with uh, investors to do as well. So we have investors that are interested in grouping them to three and doing three as, as a commercial. Who's responsible for what in your guys' partnership on these transactions? Or is it just kind of, I'm, I'm sure you have roles and responsibilities. So tell me what you're responsible for. Yeah, so I'm sort of the, the general contractor role and mindset. So a lot of the challenges working with the, the managing the builder relationship, we both have a great relationship with the, the builder and family. Yeah, and, but... and it is a family run business. They've been doing it for 40 plus years. So that's, and it's fun. We're like good friends and the social aspect. Yeah. Um, so I, I, and I also work with the city and the municipality to make sure the zoning and what we're building is going to pass in terms of inspection. And then Crean is obviously the design. Well, I, I work at the space planning, working with the, the tenanting and, and doing the, the, um, uh, the actual construction and design of the, the builds that we're doing. So I work closely with the builder and talking about what needs to be done to really do purpose built designs for tenanting because they're not used to that. They're just used to turning out their, their projects for you know, a single family home. They don't look at it to be purpose built for, for tenanting. So it's, it's new for them. So I really help them you know, maximize the design in that way. What's your advice for people that wanna get into this kind of investing? I'm sure you've learned a few lessons uh, along your journey already. What would be some, uh, a major lesson that you've, you've taken away and that you could uh, impart to somebody else if they wanna do something similar? I, I think that for us, it was important to sort of have um, a baseline strategy not and, and not say it was fixed that we're gonna do a certain thing. It was to be flexible and adaptable because the pandemics changed things greatly in terms of the products we were looking at, what we were investing in and how we, and even now we're tweaking it to you know, separate HVAC systems with the pandemic is more marketable for a low cost, things like that nature why in a vision board was super important to us. We didn't have that initially. And we said, wait a second, we really have to sort of focus on this and just sort of take every day. You know, there's going to be conflict with different situations. So I think to know your market, like when you're looking at your markets, it's really important to really research your market and, and, and understand where you're investing, because that's really going to draw the tenanting to the investment that you're, you're eventually going to purchase. So you want to know your market and be able to, you know, uh, communicate that to your investors and, and to have that as a, a proof of that this, this actually really does work, not only with the investment, but to um, build a really great property that is going to be tenanted and stay tenanted. Take it with a grain of salt. Enjoy the moment, right? We, we take a day every once in a while. We had a, a spa day at the end of September, we probably need another one. <laughs> uh, just, just to sort of reset your mind. Yeah, and I see you have your wine bottles in the back there. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's always good too. That's, that's my spa day right there. <laughs> well, hey, and thank you guys so much for walking us through this. I think it's a phenomenal strategy. Uh, sounds like you guys are, are really um, creating a great product, not only for your tenants, but also for your investors. I'm gonna leave your information in the description below. If people wanna reach out to you directly, they can always do that uh, to get in contact and get more information. Um, thank you guys again for walking us through the, 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 the process and what you're up to in Chatham, Ontario. If you guys enjoyed this session with Grant and Kareen, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at DaronVoros.com. With it, I'll say, Grant, Corrine, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy day to be here with me and share this knowledge with my audience. I really appreciate that. I wish you guys the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And hopefully at some point in the next little while, our paths can cross and we can actually be together again in person and talking about real estate investing. And until that point, I wish you guys the best of success for the remainder of 2020 and all the best in 2021. Thanks, awesome. Sarah. Thank you. So likewise. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.